Okay, hello Ron, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I wanted to talk about something that I think is quite interesting about this game, and I think it's what makes a lot of the top tier characters top tier. And what I'm referring to is a character's ability to be good at doing nothing. And I know that sounds kind of weird to say, but what I mean when I say that is how well can a character exist safely? And existing safely is something that is going to be very specific to a game's mechanics and the game's system itself. So, for example, in this game, when I'm talking about the game mechanics, I'm talking about an instant homing dash that homes on the opponent is advantageous on block and starts combos and is completely free, a semi-invincible free sidestep that doesn't cost any stamina or anything, you can also do the same thing in the air but you can't do a homing dash in the air, and then what I mean by the actual system a game is built on, specifically to this game I'm referring to the notorious delay. So not only the ridiculous delay like on PlayStation 4 has way more just inbuilt input delay than other consoles, but even on basically every console and platform there is a weird amount of built-in input delay in the game, but on top of that inbuilt input delay, the online is not great. The delay-based netcode is probably one of the worst I've experienced in modern fighters, and um, it, you really know that a netcode is bad if Steam Remote Play is able to connect online players way better than their online system of the actual game. So. When you combine these things together, the system mechanics where you've got these um, instant dash-ins that are advantageous in so many ways, and also the actual system itself having a horrific amount of delay from multiple reasons, it makes things very, very hard to react to. And obviously not being able to react to things is bad, and it puts you in a bad situation where you are unsafe. And remember this video I'm talking about is being good at doing nothing but doing nothing safely. How well can a character be in a state of safety? <laughs> so, for Zenitsu specifically, I think he's one of the best examples of this, especially out of the Slayers. We'll talk about demons quickly at the end, but Zenitsu is the best Slayer when it comes to existing safely. Basically, what I'm talking about is Zenitsu either like doing this or jump sidesteps constantly. He is one of the best in the game at doing this, and why is this so powerful? So. Say for example, if you know, we're in the neutral, I've maybe ended a combo, done like a stupid combo like this or something, and we're just chilling about, Zabito is walking around, and we're kind of doing, in this situation where we're both like walking around each other, no one's dashing in or anything, we're kind of doing this. When I'm just walking sideways like this, and there's a lot of delay, both with the inbuilt delay and the crappy online connection, that not only ha adds extra delay, it has a fluctuating amount of delay. So the delay will increase and decrease, making it practically impossible to react to a lot of things consistently in most connections. So when I'm walking sideways, obviously I'm not blocking, but you think that that's kind of fine, because you know, you're around this distance, you the opponent is not immediately on top of you, so you don't have to stand here blocking from all the way this far away or else what are you going to be doing? So walking around like this seems like a kind of okay idea, but it can honestly be very hard to react to dash-ins. And obviously, you know, when you're walking around here, I expect to be able to react to dash-ins, and I've got a few options. I can just, you know, stand there and block it, I can try and sidestep it, or if I'm really feeling myself, I can try and parry the dash-in, or even armor through it to try and counter it. But, um, in this game, Dash-ins, you know, they have a little bit of startup, so theoretically they should be reactable, because you can see the opponent dash in, and that is why they have them, you know, be able to be cancelled into block and stuff, to make them, you know, more powerful, because they are reactable. The thing is, they're not very re reactable, and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this when you're fighting online. A lot of the time, you, like, see the thing coming, and because of the delay, either your block, or your parry, or your sidestep just doesn't come out on time. And because of the fluctuating delay, maybe you've been, like, you're even accounting the amount of delay that there is meant to be, and you're just trying to block, and so you, you're even doing it early, but maybe there's just a sudden drop in the connection, and then the delay is increased a lot. Your block just comes out slower, and then you get hit by the dash-in, and because the dash-in starts combos, well, you're just taking a big chunk of damage, and maybe you have to use both of your support bars now to, um, break away from the combo, which is, you know, obviously not ideal. And even if you do manage to react to the dash in with just a block, you're still not in a good position because, as I mentioned before, dash ins are advantageous on block. So someone dash ins on me, 
it's still their turns. So fundamentally, just walking around in neutral is relying on the fact that you can react to what the opponent does. And as we said, delay means reaction's bad. So walking around sideways is kind of ruled out as a great option to do in the neutral because you have to either react to things with block or counter them and that's very hard. And you might also think, well, if I'm in this distance, instead of walking sideways, why don't I, I just use my dash in? If dash ins are so powerful, why don't I just start the offense? And that kind of goes back to what this video is about, is existing safely. And existing safely is, in essence, disengaging from the rock, paper, scissors of a game. And anytime you engage in a rock, paper, scissors, which is, you know, anytime you try to do any kind of offense, there's some form of inherent risk, whether it's even like in rock, paper, scissors, where there's, you know, one option beats another option, but you've got a different option to beat the option that beat the other. Anytime you're going and making a choice and engaging in the rock, paper, scissors of a game, which is what games are all about, whether you go for a grab or a block or an armor or a dash in or using your plus frames, and maybe from the plus frames you go for a throw. Anytime you're doing this, you're engaging in rock, paper, scissors, so you're engaging in some form of risk. But existing safely is choosing to opt out and disengage from risk in order to exist safely. So the solution to this is using different kinds of movement in the game. And the two things that I think really are good at circumventing this problem is just dash walking, where as you can see, if I dash and release block really quickly, it can almost be, so look at me walking sideways, dash walking can almost be the exact same speed if I do it fast enough and I release the block button fast enough, you can almost not even tell the difference in movement speed. And obviously, mashing the block button and releasing it while you're walking around is naturally going to increase your safety because you're blocking about half the time that you are walking. And on top of just having a guard be in the middle of this, maybe you accidentally will block a random projectile just because you happen to be guarding while you're walking sideways. But because your finger is on the guard button and you know the muscles have warmed up, they're ready to press the button down, your reaction's gonna be way better because you already have your finger's muscle ready to do the action that you want it to do, and that is block. So you can way more easily react to things, and you can also just accidentally react to things and accidentally block them. So this is a really good option. And the other option is obviously jump sidesteps, and you could understand why this would be a good option, considering the fact that, I don't know, there's been a lot of contentiousness about jump sidesteps. I think in some Korean tournaments at the beginning of the game's lifespan, jump side jumping was banned completely because of how powerful jump sidestepping was. Um, it's very effective for time wasting, and it's just a really powerful tool. It's even been nerfed, I think, once or twice in the game's patches, but it's still a very, very powerful technique. So just jumping and sidestepping sideways, or honestly any direction, backwards, whatever you want, is really, really powerful, because it implements a lot of movement and a lot of safety. So if I'm jumping over things, I can jump over dash-ins, I can jump over a lot of grounded things, even a lot of projectiles, and then adding the sidestep at the on top of the jump it decreases the tracking on dash-ins and gives you a little bit of invincibility to either just be completely invincible through dash-ins or other special moves or projectiles, and it brings you to the ground faster so you can keep your momentum moving, whereas jumping, you kind of have like a weird falling arc that slows you down a bit, but if you sidestep it moves you quicker and you have just a lot of movement and a lot of very safe movement. And what makes this movement a lot better than just doing, say, sidesteps on the ground? You might be asking, why don't you just do this instead of doing the jumps? Not only does it give you better movement, but it gives you more options too. And this is particularly important when it comes to why Zenitsu is so great at this. So if I'm sidestepping along the ground, see, watch when I do a sidestep and try and do a special move afterwards. I have to wait for the full recovery of the sidestep before I can do anything, including block. So as I have to wait for Zenitsu to stop doing his lovely slide or his flip kick before I can dash in or do virtually anything. However, when I do the same thing in the air, which is equally good, if not better, because you've added extra movement and a vertical movement, I can actually cancel into special moves after I complete the sidestep, which is really amazing. Not only does it have less recovery, even when you land on the ground, just to block on top of the invincibility that a sidestep gives you, it also gives you the, the flexibility of canceling into aerial, aerial stuff. So whether it's just aerial buttons, or aerial special moves, you've got a lot more options, and it makes this really, really powerful for Zenitsu. 
So I have been actually paying a little bit more attention to the competitive or pro scene for this game. Watching Zenitsu gameplay, you can see a lot of Zenitsu players spend a lot of their time whenever they get a situation just to jump sidestep, because it is really advantageous for Zenitsu. So yeah, Zenitsu is very good at existing safely and using the jump sidestep. So let's have a look at some pro Zenitsu gameplay. This gameplay is on Demon Slayer Competitive's channel. I will link them in the description, of course. So here we have Game Breaker God against Eternal Flight. Game Breaker God playing as Zenitsu. Obviously a very, very good Zenitsu player. And we get to see a lot of Zenitsu tendencies here. So as you can see, already we've seen quite a few jump sidesteps just around in neutral. They're not ways of getting in, they're just ways of Zenitsu existing safely. is actually not going to be that great for for GBG because... The guard broke on the first Hinokami hit, and the second one just broke the combo immediately. That's not a very good combo for extensions. Goes for a nice combo there. And now Zenitsu, as you can see here, now he's just jumping and sidestepping, and there's nothing Makumo can do about it. Bringing out a Nezuko support is not able to track him down. Water Wheel is not able to track him down. And whenever Zenitsu wants, as you can see there, he's just able to completely catch her. Just wait for him to land, unleash the you can see more jumping sidesteps here, even when nothing's so happening, this is just the safest way for a character to exist in this game. So anytime he gets the opportunity to do this, maybe he did a pushback into a jump sidestep, or like, you know, jump sidestep forwards. Anytime he's given the opportunity to this, it's a really good way of him disengaging while also being able to take his turn. Which is where it kind of breaks the idea of existing safely, because Zenitsu can exist safely in a way that allows him to go on offense more easily than his opponent. So anytime Zenitsu jump sidesteps, he can basically go into his Thunderclap and Flash special move, just his tilt special. If I get the opponent to stop guarding here. This is really amazing. So not only is he choosing to keep himself safe, jump back dash, or like jump sidestep, it's very safe movement as we've talked about already. And if he goes into Thunderclap and Flash, well, depending on the range, he can just go straight into a combo. And get the weirdly high Zenitsu damage he is known for. But a lot of Zenitsu players um, will not do this because they have a better option. They can do the Thunderclap and Flash after a sidestep and call out a support. And calling out a support just makes this a completely overwhelmingly overpowering situation in Zenitsu's favor. So whenever he does this and calls out a support, not only is this immensely advantageous on block. But also just having out a support makes your combos way easier and better, obviously. Which means this is basically just a win, win, win for Zenitsu whenever he's able to get in this situation. Whenever he's able to go for a jump sidestep, he can go for his Thunderclap and Thrash, bring out a support, and it doesn't matter literally what the opponent does. Whether they block Thunderclap and Flash, Zenitsu is going to be extremely advantageous because of the support coming out. And if they don't block the Thunderclap and Flash, obviously Zenitsu is going to get a full combo. And even if the opponent tried to armor through the Thunderclap and Flash, it's not going to hit because Thunderclap and Flash goes behind the opponent. So if, the, if Sabuto starts charging an armor attack while I'm in the air here, it's going to go in the wrong direction and Zenitsu is just going to be behind. And then depending on what support you have, the support is going to hit them afterwards and Zenitsu is still going to get a full combo. And in this clip, as you can see, even if the opponent parries this situation, having the support out just completely covers the situation. So even if the opponent goes for the most amazing committal option ever, Zenitsu is still totally fine. So this situation is just vastly, vastly, ludicrously in Zenitsu's favor. And the fact that he can get it from his extremely safe existence is what contributes to Zenitsu being an extremely terrifying presence in neutral. Not only is it extremely terrifying just going into Thunderclap and Flash, because that only works at certain distances. Obviously that's not going to be a threat if I'm all the way over here, because the Thunderclap and Flash goes kind of downwards, especially depending on how high I am. 
it won't make it to the opponent. The Zenitsu yes. being able to move around like this yes. is extremely um, powerful because it'll negate anyone's si yes. supports or any way they have yes. of engaging on you. They can't yes. dash in on you, yes. they can't do anything that'll hit you really c unless they have an amazing yes. tracking move, yes. which are very rare Ooh. in this game. So at any time when Zenitsu is doing this, it's his turn to choose when he wants to engage in the opponent, when he decides he wants to engage in rock, paper, scissors, if when he wants to go on offense. And luckily for Zenitsu, he is one of the fastest dashes in the game alongside Akaza that just home in on the opponent super quickly. He's got <laughs> lightning speed, just like his bloody thunderclap and flash, it travels super quickly. Which means that in the aforementioned, very laggy, delay-filled gameplay that you have when you're playing this game, going in for a random dash in, in the middle of your completely unavoidable movement is a really powerful thing, and the opponent doesn't know whenever you're going to go in for this, because you get to decide and there's not really anything that they can do about it, which is what makes it so oppressive. Okay, and as you can see, when we get into neutral here, Zenitsu is just completely in control, goes in for a dash, fakes out, and just is completely controlled, go in for a dash whenever he likes. It's totally up to him, thanks to his amazing movement and his ability to just exist and do nothing very safely. You can waste time and spend as much time doing this as you really like, just jumping around, doing it slightly differently, maybe doing a grounded one, going forwards, going backwards. Anytime, you can dash in. And even if you do choose to dash in, you can fake out and just be like, huh, oh, just kidding, I'm still doing this, or dash in and go for a grab. Being able to exist safely is what makes characters top tier in this game, because they can play the game way better than anyone else can. Now let's quickly talk about how demons fit into this and why demons are so top tier in this game, particularly demons that can throw projectiles, which is why poor Yushiro and Tamayov don't really fit into this and don't get pushed to the high tiers like the other demons, which all have projectiles. Now, in this game, like we mentioned, your ability to exist safely in a game depends on the game's mechanics and the game's system, so the delay. Um, and in this game, the game's inbuilt mechanics are really, really favorable to people who are able to put hitboxes in front of them. And obviously, projectiles are a hitbox, and they're a disjointed hitbox. So if I throw out this projectile in front of me, there's just this massive wall of hitbox that's just sitting in front of me that my opponent can't engage with. So like, where I'm walking here, it's just like that's a, that's a barrier that Enmu just can't cross. And the main movement feature in this game is obviously a linear homing dash, so that option kind of gets neutered. And of course you can block during it, but blocking a projectile isn't ideal either. So if there is some kind of barrier in between Enmu and I, whenever I'm able to throw these, Enmu has to find a different way of getting into me. Obviously I'm not just talking about Enmu, just the opponent has to find some other way of getting in. And whether that's sidestepping and then going for a linear dash in, which is risky, because what if you put a different barrier in front of you? like a different projectile, like what if I just throw more than one, then going for a dash in after a sidestep still isn't going to work. So maybe you have to do like multiple dash ins and trying to like weave your way in through the projectiles to get in onto the opponent. That's a way of getting in. Or maybe you just have an interesting way of dodging and approaching, like maybe doing a jump sidestep. Unfortunately, Susamaru doesn't have a great jump or side, um, aerial sidestep, but if you do a dump sidestep into a dive kick, a lot of characters can do that to get around projectiles at this distance because they like jump over them, lip sideways, dash in and then go for a dive kick and then they get a punish on the projectile thrower. Or if you're a character that just has the privilege of having a tool that's good against projectiles, <laughs> like Susamaru, you can just go straight through them if you have the ability to. So as you can see here, even when this Zenitsu player, Hil Hiliaster, sees that Yahaba only throws one projectile, he's like, okay, well if I dodge this one projectile, which is the one barrier in between me and Yahaba, then I'm able to make my linear direct approach in, but unfortunately, Yahaba is not that feeble and is able to just do another projectile later on, and it just catches a straight on approach, which shows how powerful just being able to have any kind of hitbox in front of you is powerful in a game that has a direct approach mechanic as the main form of movement. So, because of the way movement is built in this game, it makes it very beneficial to have some kind of barrier you can place in front of you, and as I mentioned, projectiles are an example of such a barrier. 
which is what really makes characters like Enmu, Susamaru, Yahaba, Rui, and Ikaza so oppressive. And all of these are just great ways of doing what we've been talking about, hovering space in front of you that makes it incredibly hard for the opponent to approach you. Even these aerial projectiles that have don't have the best recovery are still amazing at this because they're a way of existing safely because when I'm at this distance, there's not much my component can do to counter me. Even though I'm throwing these, maybe they could technically armor through them or they could do something that dashes underneath, maybe if they manage to dodge them. I'm very, very safe, but my opponent has to go way out of their way to try and do anything to punish this. So the risk will... The risk for this is clearly in my favor. And even if the opponent does manage to get through, I can always sidestep out of the way. There's just no way that this is an unfavorable situation for me. Which just makes demons so powerful, because they can exist safely while having an advantage. Throwing out projectiles against characters with swords is not as big of a risk as trying to dash in and go for mix-ups or be close to opponent where you're engaging a rock paper scissors situation even though zoning does include elements of rock paper scissors like guessing what the opponent's going to do to maybe counter it and do go for a different projectile to counter their approach you are sitting within a bubble of safety and your rock paper scissors are you guessing how your opponent is going to try and get within your safety bubble, whereas other characters are trying to guess whether they do the right thing or they die. So it's kind of like you're playing a game of rock, paper, scissors before the game of rock, paper, scissors that other characters want to play begins. And just to quickly mention Akaza, who is at the top of the tiers, and you might be wondering, well, Kaza isn't really like a proper zoner. Like, he just has this one projectile special move that, you know, can throw some projectiles, but doesn't do that much. But Akaza is kind of guilty of all of these things we've been talking about. He can, he's one of the kings, just like Zenitsu, of doing nothing. He can jump sidestep all day he likes because he's an amazing dash in that is super, super quick, so he can catch the opponent off guard. He's not as good as Zenitsu, just because of how his sidestep is built. It doesn't travel as far, it's not as quick to recover, and. It's just, in general, not as great. So he's not as good at this, but he is gets the bonus of having projectiles, which is the advantage that the other demons have, which is what made them powerful. He can completely shut off one method of approach, which is a linear approach, just by throwing these projectiles in front of him. Akaza throwing these projectiles is a version of him existing safely and kind of doing nothing. Because not all the time when you're throwing these projectiles, you're expecting the opponent to get hit by them or even block them. You're just safely sitting in a situation where you are far more safe than the opponent is. It's safer than like walking around sideways or like dashing straight in because your opponent has to react to what you do instead of the opposite. So anytime I have the ability to throw out these projectiles, the opponent has to react and sidestep and try and get out of the way, or try and armor through, or try and do something. And I just have to sit here and pay attention to what they try to do, and I can maybe adapt to what I see they try to use as their reactions. So a bunch more jump sidesteps, obviously. Even just after the pushback. Whatever happened Jump sidestep there, to get out of the situation, to disengage, like we were talking about. And see, just whenever in neutral, just jump Charged sidestep, jump sidestep, just to exist super safely. There, way too fast jump sidestep, jump grab. sidestep, jump sidestep, and then choosing to dash in whenever he feels like it, happens yes. to get a hit, boom, goes in for ridiculous Zenitsu damage. The double dash tech, and finish it. And here we see, even though he did the Thunderclap, Fashion Prime, he missed his combo, but it's still an amazing yeah, option that is... Really, really good for Zenitsu to represent. I think he got the, the timing for that right, but the, the corner might have messed his, his uh, direction a little bit. Once again, just existing super Very safely nice. neutral, deciding to go in, and it just ends up working. Oh my god, that combo was kind of cool, though. Oh, Makamo managed to catch him this time though. Yeah, no, it's not completely impervious, but it's just very powerful. Goes for a reset. Ooh, yeah, it, yeah. damn. Matsuyama's vision. <laughs> Styling! Styling! Oh, oh, dude, that was crazy. That was 
Pretty nice. Okay, that this is irrelevant, so but that combo was horrifically dirty. What the hell? I like, that's like okay, now in this video, we get to see Zenitsu versus Yahaba. So we get to see Zenitsu, the king of doing nothing, versus a demon who is inherently very good at covering the space in front of him and being good at existing Make safely. Block, okay, and in this movement, we can see a combination of jump sidestepping and walk guarding. Nice, look at this movement by the Zenitsu player. Oh my god, that was impressive. That was prime sh movement. An explosion available, that is a surge in French. Dodge, 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 dodge. Boss fight denied into the throw. Damn, that was more sh movement again. Hell yeah. It's a nice, more nice sh movement, but then accidentally goes for a parry, which you do have to be careful of if you're doing that. Assist actually catching Zenitsu, but okay, and as Zenitsu you can see, when we get into uh, neutral here, Zenitsu is just completely in control, goes in for a dash, fakes out, and just is completely controlled, go in for a dash whenever he likes. It's totally up to him, thanks to his amazing movement and his ability to just exist and do nothing very safely. So yeah, this was just a little video that I thought was kind of just an interesting concept, because it is very different to other games, because obviously other games, you know, are based on different mechanics, different systems have different ways of getting in on the opponent, also have different online connections, um, which all makes the meta of the game completely different. And I just thought it was kind of interesting in this game that like jumping and sidestepping and being able to exist and do nothing is quite strange and not what one would expect. So I hope as you learned something from this video or maybe just I brought something up that you can think about a little bit more, brought something to your attention that you maybe haven't thought about directly. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.